welcome back to the channel and uh, today I'm fishing at uh, Bossington on the uh, Somerset coast on the Bristol Channel. It's uh, Monday the uh, 16th of October, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, it's low water and I've uh, just started. Two, two casts, two rods are out, first uh, rods are out and um, I'm fishing um, a two hook scratching rig with a uh, frozen black lug and squid and I got a 2-0 pulley panel with uh, bluey, bluey and squid. Um, it's meant to be an easterly wind so that's why I've come to Bossington but it's, it looks like it's more nor'westly in my face at the moment so a little bit uh, problematic with the wind because the easterly tends to blow over the back of the shingle bank here and you've got a little bit of protection but anyway hopefully you can hear me above the, uh, above the noise of the wind. Um, baits today I've got um, just frozen baits, I haven't got any fresh baits. I've got uh, frozen squid, bluey, sand deal and I've got uh, frozen blacks, some frozen blow lug and some frozen rag. So we'll see how we uh, see how we go. It's quite cold, it's about 9 degrees. The plan is to fish up to high tide uh, which is at 20 past 8 tonight. It's a big tide um, so how far I go I don't know because obviously we've got the whole of the shingle bank here you can see my I put my bivvy at the high tide mark and uh, we've got a diff we've got like a 1.7 meter low and we've got a uh, was it nine point something 9.7 meter high so we've got eight meters so the best part of 25 feet of of tidal range so it's a big tide um, sorry a bigger than average tide really I suppose for the Bristol Channel I've got uh, rotten bottoms on the both both traces. Um, I'll show you those traces uh, in in a while. Primarily because when I fished here before, it's been a bit of a, a snag fest, and uh, there's, a, there's a chap fishing down towards Hurlston Point, and I just noticed him trying to break out of a snag. So it is quite snaggy here. Um, so we'll see how we go on uh, on that. But rotten bottoms, um, really, to uh, just try and avoid losing the, the main trace um, so we just use the lead so just fishing at the moment just plain leads uh, plain six ounce leads on the the 14 foot rod and I've got a, a four a four ounce lead uh, on the uh, on the 13 foot uh, rod on the scratching lead and it doesn't appear to be much tied at the moment and hopefully I'll see if I can get away with with not using a grip lead because they're a bit more expensive to lose I'd like to thank everybody who's been watching the, the, the channel in recent week. Um, my last video at uh, Chesil last week was very popular, my sort of um, fastest selling video as it were with the number of views um, in a week. So thank you for that who've liked um, and um, those who've uh, subscribed in the last week. And it's always great to have your comments and observations. So thank you for that. But really appreciate everybody who uh, takes time to watch, uh, watch the videos. Hope you have a laugh. I don't take it too seriously so uh, hopefully you uh, you might learn something you might not but anyway it's just really the enjoyment of seeing someone battling uh, battling the elements and that might be the case today I say it was meant to be an easterly wind no fresh bait massive tide a bit like what I said last week really what could go wrong with that three combination anyway we'll uh, we'll uh, give it a bash I've had the drone up already in the lighter winds um, so hopefully there's some drone footage, but it's quite an awkward beach to fly the drone really because you've got the pebbles um, and really about landing landing the drone more than taking off more landing the drone safely such that it doesn't crash so uh, there'll be a little bit of drone footage um, and uh, well, that wind's just really blowing up again anyway but fingers crossed we'll also have some fish uh, some fish action as well so uh, one of the rigs I'm fishing today is just a standard pulley panel. Um, for those of you that don't know what what a what a pulley panel is, here's what I what I do. So I've got at the bottom I've got a four ounce lead. So this is for my lighter rod. Uh, I've got a four ounce lead with one of these um, rotten bottom quick releases. So what happens is you so the lead is is clipped in on the metal uh, wire. And this little red bar here, or little band, when it hits the water, it, it releases the lead. And then I've got a, a weak link here of about 15 pounds mono fluoro, uh, mono, sorry. 
and then obviously if it gets snagged that's weaker than my main line which is near a 20 pound um, I've got a because it's a pulley panel I've got a, a, a jet an imp um, there to clip the uh, hook onto uh, I also I fish a, a link swivel uh, primarily just to try and cut down on the amount of twist if the, if it, the bait spirals when it casts out I got 80 pound asso uh, rig body uh, a bead, a swivel that I connect to my uh, clip on my main line, um, another couple of beads, and then a swivel. And this has got uh, 30 pound amnesia. The trace is about two and a half foot, and I got relatively small, just a size 10 um, 10 um, Vereerus uh, big mouth hooks. Uh, so that's my that's my rig on one of the rods today and obviously when it's clipped up you uh, you clip the hook into the breakaway imp there so that you have a streamlined uh, you have your swivel connected to your, your your clip on my leader and then when it hits the water the pressure of the water just releases the imp and frees the trace into the water and here's a baited trace I've got, um, these were blow lug I had at a, a recent um, uh, trip to Chesil, which I basically just um, salt them down, put them in newspaper, sprinkle salt on them. They generally burst, and um, but they freeze down well. You just keep them in newspaper, soak up all the water in the fridge for a bit, and I freeze them. And then they tough as old boots. A uh, bit of squid there. So there's four frozen blow lug there with a, a size 10 uh, Aberdeen on a well, there's what there's one at the top there, one at the bottom and a, on a pulley panel. So that's a typical sort of worm and uh, squid bait that I'm using on the uh, smaller rod. And then I'll, I'll show you uh, a, a fish bait, a bluey and uh, squid bait in a bit. Well, actually, here's a here's just a double sand eel and squid. This is on a 2-0, um, they're Vereva's 2-0 uh, hooks. Um, so it's two relatively small sand leels with a, with a squid just wrapped on. And I tend to use uh, a little bit of ring tubing just to uh, keep that uh, top panel hook aligned. Um, the previous trace with the worm was, was 30 pound amnesia on an 80 pound rig body and this one uh, probably like two and a half feet this one is uh, four four and a half feet and that's uh, I think that's 50 pound or 60 pound amnesia black amnesia uh, rig body on an 80 pound asso uh, trace but everything else is the uh, the same just a slightly bigger this is a six ounce lead bigger bait just more lead to try and just punch it out a bit but the uh, the same uh, Gemini clip imp, sorry, and uh, the um, rotten bottom setup. Just need to catch something now. Uh, been fishing for an hour and a bit. I had one bite on the small rod, which didn't uh, come to anything. My bivvy's blown over twice in this wind that is not an easterly. It is a northeasterly. I pitched it completely wrong, basically into the face of the wind. So it took off. So I've actually just collapsed it for the moment. And when I need it later on, as the tide comes up, I'll, uh, I'll pitch it uh, more appropriately. So it is, it is a beach where you can use your, your, your bivy with obviously with the pebbles and everything. Um, so, but uh, generally, um, yeah, make sure you pitch it such that the wind isn't blowing into it. <laughs> so here are my two rods. Um, I've got my Daiwa tournament rod on the right hand side, 14 foot, uh, teamed up with a Penn Mag 525. And then on my left hand rod, I've got a, uh, it's a 13 foot uh, Penn Surf Blaster or something, I can't remember what it's called now. And that's with a 30 year old Abu Elite 6500. In the background there, if you don't know the mark, Bossington. Um, we're in the Paulock Bay, so we have Hillston Point there, 
to the uh, to the east, and then as we swing around, that's the Welsh coast over there. And then here we go down towards here's Porlock, and then we have Porlock Weir, where I did a video a few months back, and then down towards North Devon, Cornwall way there. So a beautiful part of the world. Um, it's very windy. Um, I'm probably. I'll try and get some more drone footage later on just to try and show a little bit more of the surrounds but but it's a beautiful part of the world if you've never been here well worth the visit not only for the fishing but also for the scenery and the walking it's a couple of hours after low water I think that wind is slowly turning around not sure if you can see that quite a, a surf I suppose of strong waves coming around the, the tip there of Hurlstone Point as the wind I think is moving more easterly fishing wise um, nothing really been very quiet one big bait came back a little bit dismantled but I think that oh there's a bite there look just on the left hand rod just as I'm talking <laughs> uh, one of the big baits came back a little bit dismantled um, but that looked like crabs rather than uh, anything else Anyway, a little nudge there on the, the left hand rod, which has got a two hook clip rig with uh, frozen lug and, and squid. Let's see what happens here.
the reason I thought I missed it was because the weight had come off on the rotten bottom and I thought I left all the blooming pout at, uh, at Chesil last week. Anyway, another reasonable pouting actually. A blank saver at Bossington, a new species. I don't think I've caught a pouting at Bossington before. Only had dogs, conger and, uh, and, and rocklin. Anyway, let's put this little beauty back in. Ah, oh, happy now. He was taken on a um, tour clip rig on Lug and Squid. Well, I think I failed to fill a fish I just caught, which was a three bearded rocklin. Um, only a small one, maybe about eight to ten inches long. Uh, he took uh, frozen lug or blow lug and squid on a 1 0 pulley panel. So that's my second fish. So I'm quite pleased that the frozen blow lug is, is, is catching. Um, I've moved up the bank now, a little bit up uh, near the high water mark. Um, just if you've never fished here before, obviously you, when you come to Bossington, there's a National Trust car park in the village. It's quite a narrow road down, so just be careful when you're driving, driving down. Remember where the passing places are, because if you meet a car on the way up, you might have to reverse. Um, then you come into the village of Bossington, beautiful, pretty little village, and there's a car park there. Um, National Trust, I'm a member, so I, I, I can park for free. Um, I don't know how much it is for, um, for uh, non-National uh, Trust members. And there's, there's toilets there with, with, with sinks and um, urinals. And so uh, that, that's good. Oh, I've got a bite. Got a bite on the left rod. Sorry, as I was saying, I've got, got a bite, I think, on the left-hand rod. Uh, that's got a two at clip rig. When you come into, um, when you come into the car park, obviously you, you pay your money, you park up. And then you walk down the road to um, the beach. Um, should be signposted. Um, don't go off into the trees because you'll end up probably at, at Pearlston Point. But um, walk down the road between the initial sets of houses um, and you'll come to the beach after about 800 metres. Quite a large expanse of beach. And then I've walked 400 metres towards Hurlston Point. Gone over the river uh, on the pebbles and then um, just walked across the, uh, the pebbles to about 400 meters. So that bite is, is still tapping away. And obviously as soon as you put the camera on it, it stops. Let's have a look at this uh, left-hand rod. Let's see if there's anything on there. I had a fish on and I've just got snagged. Let's leave it for a couple of minutes, see if we can uh, free up. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, big shark came along and took my bait. Little doggy. It's quite a strong tide, tide pull now. And I, I, my rod went quite down tide and uh, I didn't want to sort of put the film, film on because uh, you can get pinned in the rocks and the pebbles quite quickly. But anyway, little baby dogfish, third species of the day. Let's put him back in and hope for something a little bit better. The champion of the masses species is back. Here is the biggest doggy. Sorry, the littlest doggy I think I've ever caught. It is an absolute baby. Unfortunately, he foul looked in the tail. I was just changing the bait. 
<laughs> he's probably uh, no more than 12 inches long. There you go. One monster 20 pound fish. There we are, look. Absolute baby. Anyway, doesn't deserve to be out in the water too long. Let's put him back. That's uh, the second doggy today. <clears throat> well, it's half a seven hour before um, high tide. Uh, it's been a little bit quiet actually, but um, just little dogfish had that little one um, earlier. And another tiny, well, not a very big dogfish, but at least it's a fish. So that's uh, three dogs, pout, and, um, and a rocklin so far. I'm going to probably fish for another couple of hours and then, uh, and then give it a go home. Huh. Well, there's another reasonable pout in, taken on um, rag and squid, frozen rag and squid. So the frozen rag that I salted down, that's working too. Good. Well, it's coming up for nine o'clock in the evening. Um, it's been relatively quiet in the dark. I have had another doggy uh, on a big bait. Um, so that's four dogs, two pouting and the rocklin. So, but obviously the rocklin was the nicest fish, but I cocked up the, uh, the, the camera work. So it didn't get, you didn't get to see it. But anyway, it's been a, has been a terrible day here at, uh, at Bossington. Um, fishing right up on the top of the bank um, and it's been relatively snag free. I've lost one, one trace but generally retrieving has been uh, much easier than when you're lower down so get a better angle on, 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 the, uh, on the retrieve. And I was surprised actually because I thought I might be in trouble. But the tide did pull hard for, very, for, for hours three and four of the flood. It uh, eased off uh, at the top of the tide last hour and it's pretty slack now actually at the first hour of the ebb. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. As I said, thanks for everyone who's been uh, making comments, liking and subscribing. And uh, really appreciate uh, everybody's uh, comments and uh, encouragement. And hopefully uh, the weather's not looking brilliant uh, for next week. Um, so it might be a, a pass on next week, but hopefully in a couple of weeks we can be back out again. So if you're out and about, take care and uh, unless I catch anything on the last cast I'll say goodbye tight lines see you again sometime bye now